So, this is Rolo, and um, he's officially known as number 4199 from Blacktown City Council Pound. And uh, he, he was surrendered to them as a stray. Not quite sure of his history prior to that. It's thought that he's about two years of age, and he's got a shocking bad skin, he's emaciated, and he's in a sorry state. Uh, these animals that get addicted to the junk food, they end up very itchy, uh, just in the same way that heroin addicts are often itchy and sort of scratching and fidgety and so on, um, can't rest. And that's the case with these poor little critters. Okay, Rolo, you'll be a nice pet for somebody one of these days. But right now, we're generally concerned about his teeth, of course, and, and the skin that gave rise to the bad teeth. Now, turning our attention to the skin, and you can see here just how thick that skin is there. Can you see how thick it is between my fingers? It's about a centimetre thick. But then when we come here, look at the difference. Can you see? Now, this is still diseased skin, and it's still thicker than it should be. But compare that with that. So it's like elephant skin. You can just see how thickened and, and, and affected it is by his constant chewing, chewing, chewing. It's all greasy to the touch, slimy, and, and got a horrible smell to it. The sort of smell that uh, many people can relate to because if they feed their dogs on junk food, then they'll have that greasy smell to them. So the bacteria are thriving, but the patient is suffering. And of course, it's feeling very, very itchy, right? In fact, we've reduced some of that itchiness now. But can you see? There you go. It sets the itch reflex, the, the scratch reflex going. Can you see that? Right, OK. So just touching the superficial layers and he feels itchy. And under other circumstances, he might be inspired to turn round and nibble away at his coat. And as a consequence, wear down his teeth, bruise his premaxilla, bruise his mandibles there, introduce a whole lot of infection up alongside the teeth and exacerbate his overall problem. So it, this is called hair abrasion where his lower incisors and lower canines are worn through and the top ones too. Can you see that? So all those teeth that should be there, six at the top, six at the bottom and then these two big canines here have worn away. Right? with a constant nibble, nibble, nibble that goes on when he's been chewing at his hair. It's the same as yourself. I mean, if you, you rub your knuckles on the carpet for long enough, or it actually would only take a couple of minutes, they would be red, raw and bleeding. Um, but whereas, in fact, you could rub your knuckles on the, the flat tabletop and you wouldn't have anything like the same problem. So, so that's what happens. Um, so he started off... Uh, with an inflammatory condition arising out of junk food, uh, well, poisoning, if you like. And then added to that, he's got the poisoning that arises out of these bad teeth. And they're sending toxins all around the body. In fact, if you look more closely now, and you can sort of see how red and, and, and changed in colour, there to there. Can you see here, more normal healthy tissue? and there the bruising and the soreness starts. And those teeth have all been worn down by gnawing away at his own coat. And almost certainly the reason for that is uh, that he's been fed the, the, the junk canned and dry food. Now that brings us to our next concern. All right, before coming to us, he, he went to the local vet down in Blacktown Way. And the vet there in question had a look at him and, and wrote a report. It's their plan that gives me most concern. Guardian Angel Animal Rescue, an animal rescue group down in South Australia who now rescue Rolo and are going to take charge of him, they will board Rolo at Bly Park Pet Health Centre for two weeks prior to transport to South Australia. It is recommended that ear and skin treatment continue but advise waiting until the patient is more stable before attempting dental procedures. Also, and in capitals, I do not advise feeding this patient bones due to recent digestive upset and exposed pulp cavity. Strongly recommend good quality dry and wet food, alas. So there we have it, in a nutshell, the problem. The vet has told us not to use nature's best medicine, the medicine that is the strongest, the most gentle, the most effective, raw meaty bones. That's what the wolf pursues every day. The wolf needs his nutrients, he needs his food, but he needs his medicine. 
and the medicine that this particular modified wolf needs is not to be used according to the vet. And of course the vet is a graduate of Sydney University, a quite a recent graduate of Sydney University and that's what the vets are told at the university. Do not, do not feed raw meaty bones because they've dressed up the idea to suggest that what oozes out of the can and rattles out of the death packet is quality dry and wet food. So he's suffering every minute of every hour of every day. He's emaciated and his skin is in a horrible state. His skin is about 12% of his body weight but in large parts it's double the thickness, double the thickness of what it should be, filled with inflammatory cells, filled with bacteria and yeast and making him feel absolutely wretched. And uh, our job is to fix him up if we can. Uh, we think we're in with a pretty good chance actually uh, because at core this will be a typical instance of junk food, uh, disease uh, and suffering. And it's the sort of thing that we see in, well, so many of the animals that come here, especially the strays and the ones that are surrendered to the pound. And we rather think that people surrender their dogs and cats to the pound when they start he with health issues. And those health issues come out of the can and the packet. Okay, so the solution then, straight off, is to give him an anaesthetic and pull those bad teeth out. There's no saving those teeth. You, you can't fix them up. I mean, some vets go to the trouble of doing root canal therapy, but of course that's just an expensive stopgap that actually does very little for the health of the dog. Okay, well, we're going to set about uh, fixing this up. We're going to start taking his teeth out. We're giving him antibiotics for his skin, shampooing him and so on. And uh, it'll be terrific when this dog's healthy, I tell you. It's going to be a complete transformation. Or at least ways, that's the intention. We don't know, but we're going to start now. We'll, in fact, we'll be starting tomorrow uh, with the surgery and uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks we can reconvene here and have a look what we've got, okay? And I'm looking forward to that. Me too. Well done. Thanks, Iris. No, worries, thank Good. You. To find these books and lots more information, visit rawmeatybones.com.